Hello, I'm Benny Bristow with How to Study the Bible, Video 2. When we closed uh, Video 1 on How to Study the Bible, we were ready to consider the divisions and books that make up the Bible. The Old Testament contains 39 books, and these books are often divided into four major divisions. Law, five books. History, 12 books. Poetry, five books. Prophecy, 17 books. Let's look at these. First of all, law, five books. Genesis means beginnings, the beginning of creation, the beginning of the human race, the beginning of sin, and the beginning of a special nation through the seed of Abraham that would bring the Savior to the world. Exodus means going out. That nation grew and finally in Egypt found themselves into Egyptian bondage. God chose Moses to lead Israel out. And you'll find this recorded in the book of Exodus. Leviticus means spiritual laws. These were laws that guided this nation. Numbers. Israel was numbered twice while wandering through the wilderness. Deuteronomy means second or repeated law. The second division would be history, 12 books. Joshua records the conquest of Israel. When Moses died, Joshua became their leader, and when they crossed over, he led into the conquest of Israel. The book of Judges is the conquest of Israel continued and records the judges that were used to carry this out. Ruth is a beautiful picture of the love of a young woman for her mother-in-law after the death of her husband. Tells of the young woman finding another husband. First and second Samuel, birth and life of Samuel, the life and actions of King Saul, David's reign as king, personal life and family. First and second Kings, David chose Solomon to become next king. Death of David, Solomon's reign, built and dedicated temple, Queen Sheba's visit, Solomon turns from the Lord. Solomon's death, divided kingdom, northern evil kings, Elijah's work, Judah's kings, Elijah is taken, Elisha continues good works, Naaman healed, Details of various kings in Israel and Judah. Captives of Israel and Judah. First and second Chronicles. Record of families. Repeated records of many events found in first and second kings. Levite divisions. Temple details. Repeated records of kings in Judea and Israel. Jerusalem falls. Ezra, restoration after Babylonian captivity. Nehemiah, restoration after Babylonian captivity. Jerusalem walls were restored. Esther, how a beautiful woman became queen and saved her Jewish people. Poetry, five books. Job, the suffering of Job, and a long debate with his friends on the subject of human suffering. Psalms, a collection of poems and songs, most of them sung by David. Proverbs, a collection of wise sayings, most of them by Solomon.
Ecclesiastes, a sermon by Solomon the preacher on the activities of life. Song of Solomon, an opera love song. Major Prophets, five. Isaiah, from Jerusalem he taught righteousness, captivity warnings, return from act captivity and the coming of the Messiah. Jeremiah called the weeping prophet and he taught about an experienced captivity. He warned against the penalty of sin. Lamentations written by Jeremiah who wept over the coming captivity of Jerusalem and the punishment of for sin. Ezekiel, a captive in Babylon and faithful to God, he rebuked sin and sought justice. Daniel, a captive in Babylon, advisor to the Babylonian king, foretold the coming of empires Persia, Greece, and Rome. Hosea, warned Israel before their fall and begged the people to seek forgiveness from God. However, they refused. Joel warned Israel of their fall 100 years before it happened and he placed all the blame on sin, foretold the great happenings on Pentecost and Peter later quoted from him. Amos, a country prophet who came to the city to turn Israel from sin. Obadiah foretold the destruction of Edom, an enemy nation. Jonah rebelled against God's command to preach repentance to Nineveh. Later went and they repented, but Jonah was displeased. Micah, contemporary with Isaiah, and had the same type message. He foretold Christ's birth in Bethlehem. Nahum foretold the ruin of Nineveh that happened 150 years after they repented from Jonah's preaching. Habakkuk, he was concerned about unpunished sinners. God assured him, even though it seemed slow, it would happen if no one repented. Zephaniah, he called for sinners to, to repent only a short time after Habakkuk. Haggai, he taught God's people after they returned to Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity, encouraged the building of the temple and restoring true worship. Zechariah, he called for sinners to repent only a short time after Habakkuk. Malachi, the last Old Testament prophet, foretold the coming of John the Baptizer and Jesus, the Son of Righteousness. Note, these prophets served two purposes. They spoke to the people of their day and told what would happen to them. Second, they spoke of the coming of imparted future events, the most important, the coming of Jesus. Now that we have looked at the essence of the Old Testament books, we need to learn the importance and purpose of the Old Testament. The Old Testament is the foundation to understand the new. It has been said that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament 
is the Old Testament revealed. When the Old Testament is not understood the way God designed it, one cannot accurately study his word. When Paul wrote to Timothy to rightly divide the word of truth, he must have been referring to this important truth. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2, 15. And that's today's video too, how to study the Bible. To continue how to study the Bible, see video 3. Thank you.